I'm going to kick it in. And then he opens a door, which is clearly somebody else's home. Welcome to Aurora, Colorado, where you can get a apartment complex if you want. But it's not just men. Look, it's a child. <laughs> Rascals. Back on the Venezuelan migrant situation in Aurora, Colorado, which we've gone back and forth from, is it real, is it true, is it true, is it fake, is it fake, is it true, from Denver's own mayor saying we, not, we don't have to worry about it, and then more and more videos come out, and this video just came out of another complex being taken over by Venezuelan migrants, and then we have a live interview with the Aurora mayor. Watch this video first to see what's going on in these apartment complexes. So just a couple of nice guys. He looks at the door and then he decides, I'm gonna kick it in. And then he opens a door, which is clearly somebody else's home. And you just have a nice people here, but it's not just men. Look, it's a child. Look, the child is learning what it's like to break into people's houses. Look, that's good parenting. It's real good parenting. I trust the Venezuelans. They're great people. Just coming in, enjoying um, everything that's going on. Let's put some music to it. Okay, now, now this changes the whole video. Coming in. Boom, kicks it open. Welcome to Aurora, Colorado, where you can get an apartment complex if you want. Bring your family down, we'll break a we'll break a door for you, and you can move right in. Hola Vergas. Ijala. Que por sol. Look, it's just good people looking for jobs. Good people looking for jobs. These are good people because they were forced to have that apartment. These are apartment hunters. These are people, these are people looking for a good price on an apartment. So let's check in. The kid has to pee. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The kid has to pee. He's just like, can I pee? And then they kick on the door. So let's check in with the Venezuelan market situation with the Aurora mayor. Break it down for us. Aurora, Colorado. Mayor, thank you very much for, for coming on with us. You're welcome. Um, it seems it's tough Appreciate to even you. get some confirmation of the details of what is going on there. First off, um, can you confirm whether or not this gang has taken over these buildings there? Confirm in it for us. So there are several buildings uh, actually under the same ownership, out of state ownership, uh, that have uh, fallen to uh, these Venezuelan gangs. Uh, we're, I'm trying to walk it back and do the. And they have fallen into. Did you just say fallen into? What does that even mean? I want to be politically correct here. They were walking and they fell into the apartment. <clears throat> Don't be such a freaking bigot. <clears throat> I'm tired of all these bigots not realizing that people just fall into apartments. Cut the music back on. Or fall. Wait. We're falling into apartments all the time. Here's me. Here's me falling into this apartment. Oops. I fell in. Sorry. Your apartment is totally my apartment now. We totally fell into it. <laughs> Papa says, fun fact, Derek is making fun of the sacred Venezuelan tradition of stopping racism. Thank you. I am. As somebody who's stepped Native American, black, Mexican, I can say those things. So, take it up with my lawyers, which I don't have. Do the, the investigation as to how the Vene so there's a concentration of Venezuelans uh, uh, in these, these three buildings. Uh, um, somebody put them there and somebody funded it. Uh, when somebody put them there. That's right. Somebody just like came over and put them in. <laughs> Ah, oh, God. I just love this. I'm learning so much about new language and how to appropriately talk about Venezuelans kicking in doors and bringing in firearms to open the doors. That's a gun. Isn't that nice? Whether it's federal government or not, we're trying to find out who uh, these gangs apparently are, are attracted to where there's a concentration of
Camp. of uh, Venezuelan migrants. And so uh, they've, in fact, have kind of pushed out the property management through intimidation and then uh, collected the rents. Uh, uh, we have. Oh, we were told that was all a lie. According to leftist TikTok, that was all a lie. So I, this is why I'm hesitant to say that Haitians eating people's pets is not existent and not true because I don't trust it because we were told at the beginning that the whole migrant thing in Aurora, Colorado was all a right wing conspiracy because they're all racist. <laughs> God. <laughs> have now um, or have had uh, it is ongoing uh, uh, operations uh, with uh, a, a task force of local law enforcement, state uh, uh, law enforcement partners and, and federal law enforcement partners. Mm -hmm. uh, to root the mark and, and arrests have been made, but these operations are now are still ongoing. Can you hear his voice? He is so nervous to talk about this. He is like he is like freaking out saying these things. <laughs> Marcia says the guy on the phone is the American supervisor, probably. He's like, no hablo inglés, it's no problem. I speak it. <laughs> With the arrests that have been made, are these confirmed gang affiliated members? You know, they, um, yeah, they, this is an organized criminal effort, uh, whether it's Trende, Aragua. Yeah, we're not totally sure. We're trying to figure it out. Who are these people? What do they want? Uh, that remains to be to be seen, but it don't, really doesn't matter. I mean, if they're if they're, you know, Venezuelan yeah. migrants and they're in their uh, conducting crime in an organized Understood. manner, they're, they're a problem. So, okay, so you're able to confirm that they, this, this Venezuelan, Venezuelan gang has indeed taken over at least some of the buildings. You're saying at least two of the three. And what I just heard from you is you don't know how they ended up there. And you even made a suggestion. Uh, I'll help you. They illegally crossed the border. And then Joe Biden and the administration gave him passes all the way to Denver, which they were given stipends to live and probably a free place to stay while they organized themselves and came together and probably bought illegal firearms or, you know, swap brought them across the border illegally. And now they have a, a home base. You're welcome. I figured it out for you. But <laughs> We're just figuring these things out. This is it's really hard to do. It's hard to do. It's so hard to figure out these things. Sometimes you have to put your two brain cells together and then you think about them together. God, I just like, I just can't with these people, man. I hate how like PC has like just allowed these criminals, these psychopaths to take over people's homes. And then like people like this mayor are so worried about saying wrong think that they're not telling you the truth. They're so worried about being canceled that he's like, um, I'm not totally sure. Uh, still figuring this whole thing out. Question that they could have been sent there by by like by federal officials. I heard you suggest. Well, I mean, do you have any reason to believe that to be the case? What? So here's a, here's the problem. I, I think we're a victim of, of a failed policy at the southern border because. Uh, what you have, I, Venezuelan does not, according to, to my law enforcement, Venezuela you, does not cooperate with the United States in sharing criminal histories. Um, you've had a third of the country leave. You've had these massive waves of, of migrants coming across the border that, that many of them crossed the border illegally, mm -hmm. were arrested, mm -hmm. uh, asked for political asylum, mm -hmm. uh, were not adequately vetted, were released into the country. Mm -hmm. um, the city of Aurora, we did everything we could to, to, to quite frankly, keep them out of, out of the city because it's not our problem. This is a federal problem. This is a problem uh, borne by the federal government. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but what do you think the federal government's going to do? He's going to release them to the city. But uh, what I think what we're trying to, to find out and what I believe occurred was. <laughs> Marcia says they're cleaning up empty apartments. The residents ditch. Exactly. They're just doing jobs Americans won't do. That ag federal agencies <laughs> worked with some of our local nonprofits. Profits, uh, and put them there. Um, now, most of these people are very good, good people. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have to say that. Let me put out a little disclaimer. Most of these people kicking in doors are actually pretty good people. And I wonder if he would say that like this 
family right here is also good people. Just great people. Misunderstood. But there, there's a criminal element that, from what I understand, what law enforcement is briefing me, that often follows them, uh, intends to exploit them within their own migrant community. And so... God, yeah, it's like an existential crisis. They exploit them. They take over their own bodies. And they leave them with no choice but to um, commit crimes. I just... That rhetoric is just so devoid of response, personal responsibility whatsoever. It's the same thing the government does, you know, they open, they open the border, they allow everyone to come in. And then when crimes start happening and you start crying wolf, you start crying, Hey, the, Hey, my community is being taken over. Hey, we used to be a, a city or a town of 20,000 people. Now there's 60,000 Asians. Things are changing. I don't like this. Why did you do this to me? They go, Hey, you're being racist. You're not allowed to say these things. And if you wake up to Islamic prayer calls in the morning, that's your fault. <laughs> need to, need, this is something you need to be okay with. <sighs> Again, I cannot emphasize this enough. There are so many news outlets on the left and prominent personalities on the left that tried to make this story to be absolutely false and did everything they can to make it seem like it was a right-wing conspiracy. And so call me crazy if I have, if I don't give the media or politicians or mayors or city officials the benefit of the doubt for any of these stories. I hold out and wait for more information. I would never say that the Haitians are actually eating people's cats because we don't have confirmed on that. But then you have residents saying that that is the case. And so you have residents saying that that is the case, but you don't have city officials saying that it is. Much like this story with the Aurora story. I mean, there was a woman being interviewed about these apartments last, like, months ago. And everyone was like, who cares? Don't care. And off the top of my head, I believe it was last year as well, August 2023. I believe there was a story about one apartment complex that had this. And, and then you saw the video of the woman with the ring camera putting it out there. So, like, <laughs> the media does everything they can to squash stories. Politicians do everything they can to squash stories, especially in an election year. <clears throat> because they are more worried about you continuing to vote for them and for them to stay in power than for you to feel safe in your own community. That's why we make fun of these. Why? That's why we laugh. That's why we, instead of going crazy, we tend to mock these people because you can't take these people seriously. If you do that, then you give them the benefit of the doubt. And I don't, I think they're evil. I think they're evil. I think they purposely don't tell you things. Call me crazy. I'm not totally sure. Maybe I am crazy. Cut the music on.